Does anyone know who the most famous journalist in the world is? Ever? Can I have some, some suggestions as to who that might be? Yeah. Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite is a good guess. Uh, not quite. He's up there, though. Any, any other suggestions? We've got Walter Cronkite in the front. Yeah? Okay. Um, it's also up there, but not, not the number one spot. One last guess. Tom Freeman. No, it's, uh, it's this guy. <laughs> Superman. Why, of all of the professions that Superman could pick, would he choose to be a journalist? The fight for truth and justice. Not fighting the people, fighting the injustice. A Gandhian media. Why is this relevant to us all? Well, for one thing, it's very easy to blame the media and play the blame game, isn't it? It's, it, it removes any personal or professional responsibility we might have. The media, they're always getting it wrong. But the media landscapes change so much. The media is the most powerful entity on earth. 200 million YouTube videos. 20 hours worth of YouTube video footage uploaded every single minute. A new blog every single second. 4.1 billion, 4.1 billion of us pay to use a mobile phone out of 6.7 billion population. 4.1 billion. Wow. What does that tell us? It tells us that at least six out of 10 of us are media owners. And I could quite easily, and I hope quite convincingly, say that even without a mobile phone, with this, with your gob, you're a media owner as well. Gandhi knew the power of word of mouth. He also incidentally knew the power of, of, of the traditional media, having set up Indian Opinion and several other newspapers as the communications channels for his movement. But 4.1 billion of us texting away, texting away, tweeting, texting, tweeting, texting, what does this mean? It means that we have an opportunity to be the media we want to see in the world. That sounds like a soundbite, doesn't it? What does that mean? Be the, be the media you want to see in the world. It means that when, rather than complaining about uh, the media and it strips us and it, uh, uh, it, it takes away our identity, our integrity. How are we texting? How are we communicating with each other? The social media revolution is significant. I mentioned some, some numbers before. Um, one of the wonderful sources of hope, and let's not forget that on such a, a day, a sensitive day, and um, a day of remembrance, where is this source of hope? One of the sources of hope is that the juxtaposition between social media and faith is news in itself. How many, for example, uh, Twitter articles have you seen in the newspaper only today or yesterday or the day before? Twitter makes news. What does that mean for us? Well, I've, I've been privileged to work with some fantastic uh, NGOs, religious leaders, interfaith groups, who constantly bemoan that there's a lack of religious affairs space for programs and for articles and no religious affairs correspondence. And what are we to do? And we're always on page 56, right in the corner. What about the front page stuff? Twitter's not on page 56 in the corner. So what we have an opportunity for is that rather than compete with a lot of faith stories, we can begin to give a creative spin on a traditional technology media story. So let me give you an example. Uh, Global Tolerance uh, created Facebook on Facebook. There was a lot of uh, media coverage about Facebook in the media, about Facebook in the media, so we created Facebook. 
social networking for, for people of different faiths. The Bali bomber, in his interpretation of jihad, said that the next jihad would be waged on the web. So part of the reason for setting up Facebook was to tackle this, to confront, faith, to confront this extremism on the web and provide an opportunity, a platform, for people of faith to discuss issues that were important to them. So it's got about 2,500 or so fans. Not bad, not great, could be better, maybe a C. But because Facebook itself, this juxtaposition between faith and social media is news, and because we had the media literacy to know that it was news and how to utilize the media, the story of Facebook went all over the world reached hundreds of millions of people. We did a Facebook poll on how people of faith were responding to the global recession. Suddenly you were finding religious media coverage on the financial pages, on the front pages of newspapers around the world. So this is a source of hope. 